will you talk to us about the evolution of this project for you? Um, yeah. William was murdered in 1992. Yep. Um, it's 2017. Yep. And I understand, you know, everyone, in, as you beautifully explained to us, everyone kind of went silent for a while because yeah. it was too much. It was just too much. Yeah. Um, what allowed you to start to think about expressing this film and this process? You know, in the absence of, of, of justice, right, in, in, in the face of the failure of, um, you know, a system that my parents believed in to, to deliver anything like due process, um, a deep and lasting silence really did fall over my family, uh, and myself included in that. But there was a, there was a time um, when the silence became more difficult to bear than the fear of telling the story was great, if that makes any sense. Yeah. Um, you know, being inside the documentary community, being, you know, uh, both you know professional colleagues and, and personal friends with many people who um, tell these kinds of stories and who train their lenses on other people who've been through experiences like this, um, and having this kind of story in my own background, right? Um, you know. There was a time when, you know, when I started working in, in this industry where no one knew, no one knew that I even had had a brother, right? No one knew that I had a brother, no one knew that he had been killed. Um, and when the weight of that silence became too much, that's when I knew I needed to tell the story. Mm -hmm. um, that's when I knew that the thing that my mother needed was to, to be able to tell the story. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, as as everyone in this room via some association or another knows, it was just a matter of you know, moving from that point of realization to actually getting uh, you know, the machine that would be you know, the production off the ground. But um, that's, that's really, that's, that was really the tipping point for me. Why was it a documentary and not another piece of artwork. You were an artist working in other media as well. Yeah. What, when did it start to crystallize for you as a nonfiction exploration? And then I want to talk about the creative process and what you chose to do aesthetically right. with the film. Right. You know, the, the, the consequences of my brother's murder um, express, expressed itself, excuse me, differently in each one of us. And there's really no way um, that I could that I could find that was more appropriate to um, capturing those consequences um, than to sit with each person who had lived their different um, vantage point um, on my brother's murder, whether it's Kevin, you know, being dragged away from William, you know, at the scene of the crime, or if it's my mother, you know, getting to the hospital and realizing that, that William is actually dead, or, you know, any number of vantage points, right? We, we know that, um, you know, that the, the best way to get to someone's individual truth is to simply sit and let them tell you their individual truth. Uh, and that's when I realized that it wasn't going to be best as a photo essay. It wasn't going to be, you know, some sort of written piece. It certainly wasn't going to be, you know, any kind of autobiography. Um, you know, it, it needed to be something that gave each person um, their voice. And aesthetically, you know, it, it because it's such a charged story, it needed to have a formal frame. Um, it needed to be something that was hyper composed, that was controlled, um, that that provided a platform, um, you know, upon which this really emotional story could sit, um, because otherwise it would be unwieldy. Um, it might actually be overwhelming. Um, and the important thing was to have a structure around um, the characters and around the story itself that allowed um, for you know, the characters to be seen in their full selves and to be shot in their full selves and to, you know, own their agency, but also to, to do things like make the house a character in the film, mm -hmm. right? To, to make silence and, and, and color and, you know, the upward vantage point of the camera um, and things like darkness and stillness and all of the things that, um, that were needed to evoke a period of, of time yeah. 
and also the passage of time. Um, the, that's that's why the aesthetic choices, um, you know, are um, what they are in the film. And I finally found you, Alan. Um, when I first talked to um, Alan Jacobson, who's the cinematographer for the film, about wanting to shoot things like absence and longing and loss and negative space and people who weren't there and waiting, you know, I'm I'm a fan of the long take. Right, <laughs> so and we've got like you know, like dozens and dozens of like five minute takes, right? But Alan really embraced this this idea of shooting things that we couldn't see, right? And um, that was really it was crucial to to what makes Strong Island so powerful because in the absence of archival footage, yeah. right, of which there is none, none. Except for Except some for the, family videos. The family video, God help me, that sweet sixteen <laughs> party, um, and the the, the B roll from from the from the local news station. They didn't even archive the wraparound news story. They just archived the B roll, and the B roll is actually so short that it that they looped it. So, and that was it, right? The, the, there was there was no original footage from 1992. So we had to create. Um, essentially, um, the visuals of the past as well as the visuals of the present, and 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 that was something that um, I'm, I'm really proud uh, I'm really proud of, and um, that wouldn't have been possible without my you know, tremendous partnership with with Alan. I'm on it. Please, yes. he's right there, right there, tall, dark, and handsome from Montana. It's truly a multivalent, multidimensional piece for me. Every time I think about it or watch parts of it again, as I just did, I I am so astonished by what you've accomplished with with no footage and with something so personal to you that you've been able to um, step outside of enough, only enough, mm -hmm. to to be able to share something about it and then to step back into it enough to t to communicate something purely visceral to us so that we can also be immersed in it. That, and that, that that dynamic I find so extraordinary in this movie, that there's your direct address, mm. and then there's your narration. Mm. Mm. Um, mm. So we're both outside and inside. Mm. Yeah. And that is, that dynamic is, unlocks something ex exquisite. Oh, Thank I you. I mean, it is, I love this film so much. I just want to say that Thank right you, now. Thank you, Caroline. I certainly um, didn't get here by myself, I'm sure <laughs> and that there, there are many people you saw in the credits who um, helped to make this incredible film uh, what it is. Um, and, you know, they um, worked as long and, and as hard as I did. Um, and, I, you know, the, the whole thing of stepping inside and outside of myself as a character and a director, you know, part of the narration is just because I had a really disciplined writing process over the time that it took to, to make the film. Tell us about and writing this. You know, it like, was what were you writing? It was a production journal. So there would be some days where I would, you know, just write. I really don't want to fucking make this film. I'm going to stop tomorrow. I like I, right? that. I, I, I literally would just, that. That's sometimes I would just write that, and sometimes I would write this line of words as a hammer. And it was the 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 process of of maintaining this production journal over such a span of time that led to, for example. You know, you were lying on the ground, or you stumble up, you stumble out of the garage, you know, um, and into the yard where you fall. That's that's from my production journal. That's me addressing William through a writing process, saying things to him in the process of making the film that I was not able to say to him in life. Right. So it was it was also uh, you know this this sort of place where I went to sort of you know put my internal thought process on paper. And then when we revisited that, it was really obvious that I had already written the narration. That was the narration, and and that was written in the present tense. Yes, it was written in the present. It was written in the present tense as a direct address to him. Everything is, you know, when I talk to William in the film, I'm, I'm actually talking to him. You're kind of removing the stricture of time, mm -hmm. actually, through exactly. that writing process. Exactly. There's 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 there there are so many different nows. In the film, right? There's yeah. the now of the black void. There's the now of, of the direct address. There's the now of the narration. There's the now of each interview. You know, at a certain point, you know, the 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 end result of that is that it all becomes now, 
It all becomes past, it all becomes present, it all becomes, unfortunately, future. 